the community uh, is also advancing very quickly in terms of a constellation shaping. You know, knowing that we're using high uh, level modulation, then the you know constellation shaping can give us gain. Uh, over ten years ago, uh, there were study about uh, constellation shaping uh, based on uh, iterative polar modulation, for example, but the, uh, the complexity was too high. So more recently, uh, the field came up with this probability stick constellation shaping based on amplitude shaping with the probability. Uh, here just shows one example. So basically, this scheme offers several practical advantages. First, it simplifies the DSP implementation by removing any iterative uh, uh, processes. Secondly, this is compatible with uh, the common QAM constellation um, and making modulation, green mapping, equalization, demodulation straightforward. And also it is compatible with the common FEC encoding and decoding uh, so that you can leverage uh, the advances in high performance FEC such as CFAC and uh, LDPC. And then you can also do read adaptation by changing the entropy of the constellation. So the key takeaway message, if you're not so familiar with uh, PCS, is that uh, the sand bits, uh, you know, positive and negative in the real and the imaginary parts of the constellation uh, can be used uh, for parity check bits. So that when you add FEC parity check bits, you will not change the probability distribution. Uh, so this is really make this uh, FEC uh, to be easily uh, added uh, onto this constellation shape without any iterative uh, process. So this is quite elegant. And thanks to the collective efforts by many people, especially from uh, people from Bell Labs and Huawei yeah, uh, with your time implementation in 2018. Uh, actually, this was also reported at the, OFC, uh, at the ACP conference by Dr. Chunjiani's group uh, with Huawei. Yep, then I have a quick summary. So basically, uh, with the fiber transmission capacity increase, over the last nine years, we are increasing at a speed of about 1 dB per year. So for example, 2013, we have 100, 100 gb per second wavelength channels with 80 channels in the C band, giving you a single fiber capacity of uh, eight terabits per second. Three years later, people doubled the capacity by using PDM-16 quantum with double the spec efficiency. Then another three years later, 400G was introduced together with the super C band with the broad and the EFA bandwidth, allowing you to have also 80 channels, you know, with extended, uh, with this extended bandwidth. Uh, so you, you double the per fiber capacity. And then next year, we expect to go well beyond 64 terabits per second. Um, per fiber capacity by using further increased uh, EDFA bandwidth and uh, even higher uh, spectral efficiency. Uh, so per channel data rate will be 800G or even more. Uh, but uh, you, you can see uh, there is actually a scaling disparity uh, reported by you know, Peter Windsor, David Nathan, Nelson and others. Uh, so basically, if you look at the overall network cap capacity increase, per year we are increasing between 30 to 70%, depending on where you are. So on average, it's about 1.5 dB increase per year, or two times per two, per two years. This doubling per two years tracks very well with the Morris law, which states that the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit doubles about every two years. This remarkable agreement is actually reasonable because all the communication data will be eventually processed by integrated circuits. Yeah, so, so we are basically maximizing, you know, what can be processed uh, in, in, in terms of what we can uh, transmit and uh, communicate. So, but on the other hand, we just heard per single fiber capacity is only increasing at the speed of one dB per year. So that means we lack half a dB. So we're, how can we conquer that half a dB? Half a dB means about 12%. So 
That means we actually have, have to have a 12% more fiber links uh, to support you know, the, the communication demand. In fact, that is actually what ha what's happened. There was a nice report uh, in reference three here showing that uh, over the uh, you know, last 10 years, uh, the globally deployed fiber is increasing at a speed of 14% uh, per year for almost 20 years. So we're really deploying more fiber at the same time increasing the capacity per fiber in order to sustain the capacity demand of our society. Uh, there is an interesting number about uh, you know, the fibers, so many, many um, miles of fibers uh, deployed already. Um, just to give a single num uh, easy number to the member. Nowadays, on average, per person in our world, have about 100 meter of fibers. <laughs> so, so that's an easy number to the member, but that's quite remarkable that everybody, including babies, uh, uh, basically consume 100 meters worth of fiber. So then also Morris, laws, Morris had a second law, suggesting that the overall cost uh, for fulfilling the Morris law is uh, ex increasing exponentially over time. That means we cannot count on Morris law to keep reducing the cost and increase the you know, cost per bit for us like before. So we really need to have a global cooperation and a collaboration to drive innovations together. Uh, this will be both beneficial and necessary. So now we talk about ways to address the channel limit. So the first idea you can have right away is to broaden the bandwidth. So we thank uh, Dr. Charles Scott uh, to propose the use of low cost fiber for communication um, uh, in 1965. And for that, he won the Nobel Prize. Then about 22 years later, Sir David Payne and others reported the use of urban doped fiber amplifier, which enabled the local transmission. Um, and over the last um, a few years, uh, people in our community are trying to expand the, the amplifier bandwidth in order to achieve more bandwidth. And for that, uh, you know, we introduced the Super C and the Super C plus Super L. Uh, there was a recent report by Huawei showing the availability of 11 terahertz of bandwidth. With that, if you use 100 gigahertz spaced 800 gigabit per second wireless channels, uh, we can support 88 terabits per second per single fiber. Then in terms of fiber itself, uh, the community is doing a lot of uh, good works uh, in China, Changfei and other companies uh, are working uh, actively to improve fiber. So according to Shannon, we have this uh, well-known Shannon capacity limit uh, with a lot of study by our optical communication domain, we realize we actually have this so-called nonlinear Shannon limit with, with the consideration of a nonlinearity. Uh, then in dispersing unmanaged transmission with coherent formats, we could uh, assume those nonlinear noise to be Gaussian disputed. With that, we can have a very elegant and simple formulas to describe the signal noise ratio that can be achieved, uh, you know, the maximum signal noise ratio and the maximum transmission distance. Uh, and you can find more reference there. And for that, uh, then there's also a good uh, um, paper by uh, an, uh, the Japanese group to show how to define the figure of merit. You know, I use a simplified uh, forum, uh, formula to show that for standard single mode fiber, you can get a figure of merit. And for this newly standardized GDA 654.E fiber, the figure of merit could be about 3 dB higher, which according to the formulas will be able to allow you to double the reach, or sometimes at least double the reach if you consider the error floor of the system, and also increase the special efficiency by two bits per polarization division multiplexed symbol. Then photonic integration, we want to reduce the cost per bit and the power consumption per bit. So even with more parallel links, we can still save, uh, we can still sustain the growth. Yeah. So if you look at the data center transceiver uh, as an example for 400G, uh, for intra data center communication, uh, the 
sorry, IMDD, intensive modulation and direct detection um, uh, uh, were used uh, primarily. Uh, there uh, you have the, uh, I actually swap this. So, so you have the intensive modulation and direct detection. And for, for uh, inter data center con connections or some longer reach uh, applications, you use coherent. Uh, there uh, we have this uh, signal processor. We have uh, uh, four drivers for, you know, four branches of lasers of, of, of IQ and polarization branches and four receiving end. So you can see both coherent detection and uh, IMDD, they actually share very common signal processing and, and optical layout and the drivers in electronics and, and also the client side interfaces. So the industry uh, is really uh, working together collectively to come up with uh, solutions to dramatically reduce the size, weight, area, and power consumption of those modules. And as you can see, showing here are some examples. It's really so compact. Such a module, plug module can support 400 gb per second um, bidirectional transmission. And for with coherent, and this uh, can support, uh, you know, PDM 16 quam over uh, 80 kilometers of fiber. Then going forward, um, instead of a pluggable optics, the, communica uh, the communication society, the community is uh, are working to towards further integration through onboard optics or co-packed optics. Eventually, the dream is to have a highly integrated optical electric circuit to better leverage the Morris law. Then in the optical domain, we also need to talk about the optical routing through optical cross connect. And uh, initially there are a lot of uh, manual connections uh, several years ago. Uh, recently, the pure optical backplane with uh, uh, this low loss M by M at the job, uh, women select switches uh, have been um, developed to dramatically reduce the power consumption and uh, and and the cost. Going forward, we also expect the better integration between optical and the electronic switching elements will help uh, to move to the third phase of optical uh, cross connect to achieve petabits per second class uh, optical routing in core networks. Then on the network side, there are also innovations such as this point to multipoint where coherent uh, FDMA. So typically we have a point to point connections uh, using the example of uh, 5G networks to connect the distributed units with the central unit. There are a lot of uh, point to point transceivers uh, to be used. Uh, and then uh, uh, in a uh, in a uh, trick uh, aggregation unit that require power uh, to do the aggregation before communicating with the central office. But uh, the new idea, uh, you know, by the community is to come up with this point to multi point coherent connections to remove the need of any electric electronic or electric aggregation. Instead, you use a passive op optical splitter to connect all the uh, remote uh, distributed units with the central units. By doing so, you not only save the transceiver side uh, numbers by factor of two, you know, dramatically reduce the transceiver cost, but also you remove the uh, electric aggregation side. So you save the real estate, you save power consumption, maintenance, maintenance cost, and more. So this kind of uh, architectural advance uh, is also uh, very useful. Um, then um, for future, people are talking about 6G with uh, targets per second worth of uh, front hole connection. And for that, there was a recent paper um, about uh, digital analog radio over fiber to leverage the benefits of uh, analog uh, radio over fiber in terms of spatial efficiency and the digital modulation in terms of uh, high fidelity. Uh, there, uh, we basically use this uh, natural probability scale constant shaping 
from the wired signal by doing this simple approximation uh, to realize the digital transmission part. Then the uh, remaining uh, approximation errors will be modulated by uh, this analog modulation and it goes through the link. Then uh, with a simple uh, proof of concept ex experiment, we show that we can improve the signal to noise ratio by over 10 dB by just reducing the spatial efficiency by factor two. And by, by having this enhancement, you can readily support 5G or even 6G constellation uh, formats such as 256 quam and 1024 quam with EVM of about 1%. Um, and with this, you, you also uh, re uh, require less power in, term, in terms of for error correction. And also uh, you can have a low latency and a flexible link adaptation. Um, then with the co uh, coherent uh, terabit per second C pre equivalent data rate can be readily supported. So one key insight about why this one is so useful, you know, this hybrid digital to analog communication. The, the intuition is that for analog signals, uh, wireless signals, eventually they look at the constellation. They want the EVM to be about 1%, but not 0%. Meaning we do not need to transmit the wireless signal with error free. We can allow a little bit of errors. You know, as long as the EVM eventually is less than about 1%. So that little bit of a relaxation can allow us to achieve Lower, lower energy consumption and the lower latency. Yeah. So basically there's a lot of interesting works that we can continue to explore to help not only uh, you know, 5G, 6G, but also uh, optical communication. So now uh, let's first, uh, go to one more step to talk about the drill network as a whole. So instead of, or in addition to innovations that we need to address all the limits, but we, let's also look at